Welcome to Opportunity Crude's Management Seminar Series, an informative look at crude processing challenges. Disclaimers The purpose of the OCMS series is to provide refiners with the latest information in processing opportunity or price advantage crudes, such as heavy sour oil, oil sand bitumen, light tight oil, and highly acidic crudes so that they can make better decisions in light of a volatile oil market. Video number 9, Don't Take It Lightly, Challenges in Processing LTO a number of recent global events have created new opportunities for refiners. In the U.S., the emergence of light tight oil or LTO such as shale oil and the lifting of export ban have created new sources of crudes that may result in increased profit. Furthermore, the light nature of LTO makes them easier to process and thus more attractive to refiners. Despite the opportunities from processing LTO, there comes great risk as these oils have properties that may lead to problems in the refinery and in refined products. Refiners may not be ready to handle the challenges that come with tight oil. This table compares crude properties for tight oil sourced from Bakken and Eagle Ford versus other crudes found around the world to highlight some of the differences in quality and cuts refiners processing tight crudes will face. Today's video will have six sections discussing tight oil processing. The first section, Basic Facts About Tight Oil, will define and provide a general introduction on tight oil. Rise in Tight Oil will discuss recent data on global tight oil numbers, U.S. tight oil production and projected production of tight oil in the U.S., Canada, and abroad. Tight oil properties and problems will discuss how certain properties with tight oil lead to problems in the refinery. Our previous videos went into detail with these individual problems, which include contaminant content, incompatibility, fouling, etc. The section Refined Products from Tight Oil will discuss possible problems with refined products from tight oil. The section Tight Oil and Refinery Processes will examine how individual processes may be affected when running tight oil. We will end with concluding remarks with information on processes refiners should pay special attention to when processing tight oil. Navigate oil market uncertainty and supply disruption in refining at the 6th Opportunity Crudes Conference in Houston, Texas in the U.S. from October 22 to the 24, 2018. The theme of the conference is Crude Disruptors, Accelerating Changes in Global Refining. Higher oil output and refining price advantage domestic light tight oil has benefited international oil majors and U.S. independent refiners in the first quarter, respectively, according to just released earning results. Unfortunately, the good news will end soon as the oil market is going to enter an uncertain time since the price route in mid-2014. A dark cloud is forming as driven by two formidable forces, geopolitical risks and changing supply-demand fundamentals. Change is not new in the refining world, but disruption of crude sources could significantly upset overall refinery operations in terms of crude management, processing, and product quality and volume. Our attendees will learn from conference speakers and network with colleagues on how refiners can navigate present market uncertainty and crude supply disruption by devising better business strategies, finding ways to increase operational flexibility and adopting new technologies to turn challenges into opportunities. As in our previous meetings, this conference is expected to be highly productive and rewarding because of excellent speakers, timely theme, well-organized agenda, and stimulating atmosphere to encourage exchange of ideas. Five topical sessions in two and a half days include Session 1, Global Oil Market Outlooks, Geopolitics, U.S. Pro-Export Policy, OPEC Strategies, Peak Demand. Session 2, Challenges and Opportunities in Oil Trading, Exports, Imports and Infrastructure Logistics. Session 3, Crude Contaminants, Incompatibility, Blending Strategies Amid Changing Feedstocks. Session 4, Flexibility of Light Tight Oil Processing and Bottoms Upgrading to Make Products in Demand. Session 5, Big Data Analytics and Emerging Adoption of Internet of Things in Crude Selection, Management, and Refining. In this celebrated biennial meeting, you will meet colleagues from many companies around the world, 
The Opportunity Crudes meeting from October 22 to the morning of October 24 is coordinated with Crude Oil Quality Association's fall meeting, which will be held on October 24 and October 25 to benefit from synergy in serving our upstream, midstream, and downstream colleagues. To save up to $300 before June 1st, Register today by visiting opportunitycrudes.com slash Houston 2018. Here is a preliminary agenda for the 6th Opportunity Crudes Conference. The terms light tight oil or shale oil refer to petroleum crude trapped in a bed of porous but impermeable rock. Shale oil is not homogeneous, and its properties can vary by location. Note, shale oil is not the same as oil shale, the latter of which refers to the sedimentary rock that contain an oil precursor called kerogen. Compared to low API gravity, high asphaltine opportunity crudes, tight oil is easier to process and may result in less refinery emissions, but the fracturing process is a concern for environmental groups. The location of tight oil is difficult to access due to the impermeability of the rock surrounding it which allows only minimal quantities to flow into wellbores. Fracking, shorthand for hydraulic fracturing, is a technique designed to recover gas and oil from shale rock. The process involves drilling a mile or so vertically and then horizontally before injecting a mixture of water, sand and chemicals into the rock at high pressures to fracture the rock. The picture on the right shows a typical shale drilling operation. As sources of conventional crudes run out, refiners around the world have been looking to opportunity crudes, which are of lesser quality and much more difficult to process. Processing opportunity crudes requires more energy, and more greenhouse gases are released, raising environmental concerns. Tight oil, which itself is not a conventional crude, is not as difficult to process as most opportunity crudes and often processing is on par with the very lightest conventional oils, making them relatively easy to refine without creating environmental concerns. U.S. tight oil is considered to be light and sweet, comparable to premium crudes. Cost recovery is considered swift compared to deep water oil and mega oil sands projects. Tight oil is often rich in lighter hydrocarbons suitable for making gasoline. General concerns with tight oil include Sludging accumulation of wax and solids in pipelines and transportation vessels. Presence of hydrogen sulfide. Problems with blending compatibility. Fouling issues. Corrosive salt buildup and water in distillates. However, one of the most major concerns with tight oil is with the hydraulic fracturing process used, which has created concerns with water contamination with toxic chemicals and flaring of natural gas. In the U.S., there are shale plays in every Petroleum Administration for Defense Districts, or PADS, which are regions designated by the U.S. Energy Information Administration to assess regional petroleum product supplies. Notable shale plays include Bakken in PAD 2, and Eagle Ford and the Permian Basin in PAD 3. The picture on the left depicts a pump jack used to lift oil out in the Permian Basin. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, Tight oil production in the U.S. will increase to more than 6 million barrels per day in the coming decade. This chart projects oil production from non-tight oil, tight oil from the Bakken and Eagle Ford formations and from the Permian Basin, and other tight oil. Bakken and Eagle Ford represent two of the largest tight oil regions in the U.S. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration's recently released Annual Energy Outlook 2018, Tight oil production accounts for more than 54% of total U.S. production in 2017. This is in part due to three recent plays, Sprawberry, Bone Spring, and Wolf Camp, in the Permian Basin that increased tight oil resources. These new plays accounted for 36% of U.S. tight oil production in 2017. Tight oil from the Permian Basin is projected to increase to 8.2 million barrels per day by 2040, or 70% of total U.S. production. Tight oil from Bakken and Eagle Ford is expected to remain steady by 2050. In 2016, 
two publications from the U.S. Energy Information Administration predicted that global tight oil production would increase to 1.36 million barrels per day by 2040. In 2015, tight oil production was primarily from the U.S. and Canada. By 2040, the EIA's projections predict other countries will contribute to the world tight oil supply, with Argentina producing 0.69 million barrels per day, and Russia, Mexico, and other countries producing 1.8 million barrels per day. The U.S. Energy Information Administration's recently published Annual Energy Outlook 2018 showed projections for tight oil production till 2050, including a reference case. The projections also take into account the availability of oil and gas resource and technology and the price of oil. All projections show an increase in tight oil production and a decrease in non-tight oil production. Tight oil production was shown to increase even more if oil prices are high and with high oil and gas resource and technology. Tight oil, compared to conventional crude has been shown to contain more metal contaminants, which have been shown to cause many issues, such as fouling and catalyst deactivation. Metal contaminants that are commonly found in tight oil include alkali metals, such as sodium, which happens to be the most prevalent metal contaminant in Bakken and Eagle Ford, arsenic, iron in trace amounts, mercury, nickel, and vanadium. Both nickel and vanadium are found in asphaltines. The following table compares the amount of common metal contaminants in Bakken and Eagle Ford tight oil. The high paraffin content of tight oil creates issues when blending with asphaltenic crudes. The mixing of highly paraffinic tight oil with asphaltenic crudes causes asphaltine instability and leads to crude incompatibility. Crude incompatibility can lead to decreased energy efficiency, increased carbon dioxide emissions, the need for heat exchangers to be cleaned more frequently, and decreased throughput. To avoid asphaltine precipitation problems, tight oil should be blended with heavy crudes with an API gravity of 13 to 16 degrees API to yield a blend of 21 to 23 degrees API. Here is our sponsor's experience. The Asphaltine Stability Index Test, or as it, from Baker Hughes, a GE company, is a tool for determining asphaltine stability of crudes and crude blends. Field as its services technology uses a portable automated titration device using near-infrared laser to detect onset of asphaltine flocculation. The testing can be routinely performed in the refinery. The as it plot is the normalized laser power intensity, on the y-axis, versus the asphaltine stability index or ASI, on the x-axis. The curve inflection point is the asphaltine flocculation onset and ASI value for the test. In the chart depicted, the black curve represents the base crude for the refinery with a moderately stable ASI value. The blue curve is an opportunity tight oil with no well-defined flock point. Additional information is required to define the ASI value of this type of crude. The red curve is the targeted blend of base crude and opportunity crude demonstrating a very unstable crude blend that will require problem mitigation. Blend asphaltine stability information can be used to help guide crude selection, blend ratio decisions, and problem mitigation planning to manage risk and maximize refinery profit. Data obtained using the field as its services technology can be coupled with the BHGE crude compatibility model to further evaluate blend stability for new and proposed blends. The BHGE crude compatibility model is a proprietary mathematical model that can estimate the ASI of a crude blend based upon the ASI values of the individual crudes and some additional crude characteristic values. The example plots depicted are simple two crude blends. The blue data represents the model calculated ASI value on the y-axis versus the blend percentage on the x-axis, 0 to 100%, of one of the crudes in the blend. ASI measurements of physical blends are also plotted validating the model values. Blends containing as many as 8 different crudes have been modeled and lab test validated in a similar manner. The values used in the crude compatibility model can also identify the theoretically defined incompatibility points for various crude oil blends. These would be blends that potentially should be avoided, or more extreme mitigation efforts required.
a crude oil database can be developed to facilitate planning of how a new crude, or a new crude blend, may impact the refiner's operation with respect to asphaltine stability. The model also facilitates ASI quantification of various crudes that do not produce a well-defined flock point. How these no-flock crudes behave in the blend is of strong interest, as many of these crudes induce asphaltine instability. Middle distillate products derived from tight oil can experience problems with cold flow properties such as poor point, water separation, and lubricity. Some of the light ends produced when running shale crudes may experience copper strip problems. Gasoline octane suffers due to the paraffinic nature of these crudes, with FCC gasoline octane on average 8 to 10 numbers lower when running tight oil derived feeds compared to conventional vacuum gas oil. Finally, blending the residual materials from shale oil with asphaltenic stocks can reduce fuel oil stability. The following table compares the properties of middle distillates, diesel and kerosene, of the tight oils Bakken and Eagle Ford versus paraffinic crudes. For refineries that are designed with higher hydrogen partial pressures and lower space velocities, the upgrading of tight oil can increase the production of liquefied petroleum gas or LPG and fuel gas if the production fields where the tight oil is being produced recovers light ends and retains them within the crude. The added strain from the higher amount of LPG produced from tight crudes on the crude tower LPG recovery system could result in operability and reliability issues. Because the increase in both LPG and fuel gas production can result in the existing saturates gas plant to be overloaded, the refiner may need to debottleneck the gas plant. Options to debottleneck the gas plant include the addition of packing and or high capacity trays to existing columns and the addition of new columns within the gas plant. Due to the low sulfur content and paraffinic nature of typical tight oils, the quality of refined products can suffer when processing these crudes. This table shows the research octane number and octane rating of gasoline and the API gravity, aniline point, and diesel index of light cycle oil distilled from whole Bach and crude. These light, high API feeds have been shown to have a lower residuum cut. For example, in the US, Eagle Ford only has a 1.6 weight percent of resid and the resid cut of Bakken is only 4.55 weight percent. In comparison, WTI has 6 weight percent resid, Brent has 9 to 11 weight percent resid, and Maya has 37 weight percent resid. Less residuum means less material for bottom of the barrel upgrading units, such as cokers. At a past American Fuel and Petrochemical Manufacturers Q&A and Technology Forum, it was mentioned that U.S. Gulf Coast refiners who had previously upgraded coking units would not have enough material to operate these units. Representatives from Flint Hills Resources and Amec Foster Wheeler stated that outside purchases of heavy fuel oil or vacuum resid may be necessary to fill cokers at refineries processing large amounts of tight oil. Flint Hills Resources also mentioned that they recycled heavy coker gas oil to the heater for a short period of time. FCC slurry can also be added to the feed at about 10% capacity. When processing large amounts of LTO, the lack of residuum may actually make coker units unnecessary. This table summarizes the problems with some refined products when processing tight oil. Light ends from tight oil can cause copper strip corrosion, while tight oil naphtha can cause corrosion and water shedding. Both jet fuel and diesel from tight oil can cause conductivity, lubricity, stability, and water shedding. Fuel oil from tight oil has been shown to cause asphaltine instability and gum deposits. Naphtha derived from tight oil is predominantly paraffinic which results in a lower N plus 2A or volume of naphthanes plus twice the volume of the aromatics content. The lower N plus 2A content means that at the same severity, Processing naphtha derived from tight oil in a reformer will reduce C5 plus and hydrogen yields while at the same time increasing fuel gas and liquefied petroleum gas yields from the reformer. The uptick in fuel gas and liquefied petroleum gas yields from processing naphtha from tight oil in a reformer can be challenging, and this is why alkylation has been preferred for producing a high-octane gasoline blend stock when processing tight oil in a refinery. 
The paraffinic nature of tight oil can lead to problems in the tank farm and upon subsequent transfer to the refinery for processing. High wax content can lead to the accumulation of sludge, solids, and waxes within a tank. A refiner once decided to store heavy Canadian crude on top of a light paraffinic tight crude and later experienced 4 to 6 feet of precipitate at the bottom of the tank. Lines to the CDU may also be affected by sludges and waxes that can lead to line block and reduced throughput. A U.S. mid-continental refiner once had 5 feet of sludge buildup after processing a high wax shale crude. To mitigate this, the refiner implemented a weekly 4-hour demulsifier slug feed treatment which was later deemed inefficient. Baker Hughes GE suggested a long-term strategy that combined demulsifier products, desalter level reduction, continuous mud washing program, and a crude pretreatment program that resulted in solids being released in the brine to be increased by 800% and eliminated the need for the weekly demulsifier slug feed treatments. In crude towers Tight oil processing causes cold preheat train fouling, higher heater duty and vaporization and the requirement for adjustments in cut points. In vacuum towers, tight oil processing causes lower vacuum gas oil and vacuum resid yields, lower ejector loads and waxier products. Shale oil contains very little feed for vacuum distillation units or VDUs, which in turn will not be able to provide enough heavy material for fluid catalytic cracking units and hydrocrackers. According to Sandy Fielden of Morningstar, refiners in the U.S. Gulf Coast have been increasing imports of vacuum gas oil or VGO to replace the insufficient volumes from processing shale oil. According to data from the U.S. Energy Information Administration, Import volumes of VGO have risen from about 120,000 barrels per day at the beginning of 2010 to about 320,000 barrels per day by mid-2014. We can expect the amount is even higher at present. Besides using imported VGO, another popular strategy is to blend tight oil with heavier crudes to create so-called dumbbell crudes, which possess a large amount of material that boils off at both the lighter and heavier ends but give larger amounts of VGO. However, the processing of dumbbell crudes can lead to numerous issues in the refinery. Interestingly, for the tight oil Eagle Ford, Fielden also notes that atmospheric residue sometimes can be used to keep cracking units at capacity while bypassing the VDU. The low coke produced by tight oil feeds make it difficult to maintain the FCCU heat balance. It is recommended that the FCC regenerator be maintained at minimum temperatures of 1,250 to 1,260 degrees Fahrenheit, so any reduction in temperature can cause catalyst circulation restraints that adversely impact unit conversion and operation. Tight oil processing reduces coke from contaminant metals and cone radsin carbon, so other coke sources will need to be used to account for the loss in coke make from these two sources, such as FCC catalysts. FCC operators should upgrade to a higher activity catalyst when processing tight oil. If not, then the FCC catalyst may not be able to produce enough coke, and the catalyst circulation rate would then need to be increased, which may result in a restraint as most FCC use can only increase the catalyst to oil ratio by so much. In an example from a past American fuel and petrochemical manufacturer's Q&A session, a FCCU operating with standard vacuum gas oil and a catalyst to oil ratio of 5.5 had coke make of 2.5 weight percent, and the operator wanted to maintain this coke make after switching to a tight oil feed without upgrading to a higher activity catalyst. In order to maintain this weight percent coke make with the tight oil feed, the FCCU operator would need to raise the catalyst to oil ratio to 8.0. However, this was not feasible as the existing catalyst circulation hydraulics would not allow for this high of a catalyst to oil ratio. Clearly, there is a need to make other adjustments on the unit to maintain adequate coke make and thus the FCC heat balance. Vacuum gas oil or resid hydroprocessing units can suffer from pressure drop issues when transitioning to feeds derived from tight oil. The buildup of polymerized material is one of the main causes of pressure drop issues within a hydroprocessing reactor. Due to the high paraffin content and destabilization of asphaltene molecules, precipitation, 
and agglomeration are highly probable. When the feed is saturated, the liquid solvency decreases, which increases the likelihood of asphaltine precipitation. Because paraffinic tight oil yield less hydrogen when processed in a catalytic reformer, refiners using this process may experience a strain on the refinery to meet hydrogen requirements. If a refiner does increase tight oil processing, greater attention should be given to cascading hydrogen users and hydrogen recovery from the refinery fuel gas system. To increase hydrogen recovery from the fuel gas system, refiners should check the heating value of the system. If the heating value of the fuel gas system is low, it most likely means a large amount of hydrogen is available. In most cases, it will be cheaper to recover more hydrogen from the fuel gas system than to install new hydrogen production capacity. For delayed cokers, the impacts of tight oil include less volume due to lower resid production from crude and vacuum towers, higher liquid yield, Improved co-quality and the need to blend tight oil with heavy crude to get adequate feed, which can lead to emissibility problems. For vacuum gas oil hydrotreaters, the impacts of tight oil include more volume available, improved catalyst cycle length and greater hydrogen uptake. For fluid catalytic crackers, the impacts include higher conversion levels, improved yields of gasoline and light olefins while coke and slurry make are reduced. Lower octane of gasoline product due to paraffinic nature of tight oil. And reduction in sulfur oxide emissions from regenerator flue gas. For hydrocrackers, the impacts of tight oil include reduced volume, feed material containing less sulfur and nitrogen, lower hydrogen consumption, and the need to blend tight oil with heavy crude to get adequate feed, which can lead to emissibility problems. For hydrogen plants, tight oil can cause reduced demand. For catalytic reformers, tight oil can create more available volume, which means unit severity may need to be increased. Lower octane, reformate, and gas yields and reduction in hydrogen production and purity. For alkylation units, tight oil can cause greater feed to be available and alkylate demand to be higher. For the distillate and kerosene hydrotreaters, Tight oil can create more volume and cause the amount of cracked stocks to be reduced. Worse cold flow properties, which include cloud and pore points. And improved cetane. For naphtha hydrotreaters, tight oil can create more volume. Less coker naphtha to treat. And greater hydrogen uptake. For sulfur recovery units and tail gas treatment units, tight oil can cause reduced acid gas rate as tight oil contains less sulfur lower ammonia, and reduced steam output. For amine units and sour water strippers, tight oil can cause reduced use of amine treating and sour water stripping and reduced demand for low-pressure steam. For RSH removal, tight oil causes an overall reduction in refinery mercaptans and lower caustic consumption. The emergence of tight oil in the U.S. and around the world, along with the lifting of U.S. export ban, have presented both opportunities and challenges for refiners. While the light, sweet nature of tight crudes can make these grades easier to process, the properties of these oils present challenges to refiners. The quality of tight oil can vary greatly in terms of API gravity, sulfur content and other properties. Certain properties of tight oil can disrupt refinery operations ranging from storage to hydro-treating. The processing of tight oil also can lead to high and low amounts of certain distillates compared to conventional feeds, which can cause further issues. It is important for refiners to monitor certain processing variables when running tight oil through a refinery. The summary here is a recap of the challenges we discussed earlier. Important variables to monitor when running tight oil through a refinery include crude quality, crude blending, desalter performance, fouling, corrosion, and process control. Today's video discussed problems with processing light tight oil. A future video discussing solutions to light tight oil processing problems will be shown in a later month. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please join us in April for our 10th seminar, What About Bob?
bottom of the barrel. Thank you to Baker Hughes GE for sponsoring this video. Sponsorship opportunities are still available for the rest of the seminar series. Please contact Matt Wonder at and Wonder at HydrocarbonPublishing.com to sponsor a future video. Sign up today to receive our quarterly technology newsletter, Worldwide Refinery Processing Review. Since it was launched in 1998, the review has become the most authoritative and comprehensive publication of the latest refining technologies around the world. The review monitors commercial technology developments and competition, plant operation improvements and troubleshooting, and R&D trends for all processing units, from the front end to the back end, in a single source. Each issue covers two technology topics with the following sections, market and technology trends and opportunities, state-of-the-art technology, plant operations and practices, refining R&D alert, worldwide installed capacity recent construction activity and completed construction projects, latest refining technology developments and licensing. As shown in the table, this year's subscription will cover eight topics, two in each quarter. Apart from an annual subscription of the review, individual quarterly issues and individual technology topics are also available for purchase. For more information, contact us at review at hydrocarbonpublishing.com. Your comments are appreciated. Please send your comments to info at opportunitycrudes.com so we can enhance the value of upcoming seminars. Here are upcoming crude oil quality events. Disclaimers.